Hazardous materials release can be prevented through good chemical management practices which include several components, such as proper labeling of primary and secondary containers, compatible and segregated storage, and the transportation and handling of hazardous materials. Hazardous material containers must always be clearly labeled and include, at a minimum, the name of the contents in English and the health and physical hazards associated with the material. If chemicals are placed into an unlabeled container, that container must have a secondary label affixed to it. Just like other labels, the new label must also have the name of the contents in English and the health and physical hazards associated with the material. The SDS is a good source for hazard information. Using a completed NFPA diamond on the label is another way con to convey the hazard information. If it is not practical to label a very small container, the proper labeling information must be written on a sign or a research logbook near the container, which must be clearly visible to employees. Containers of chemicals must be organized and stored in accordance with the ASU Chemical Hygiene plan. All chemical containers must be labeled and kept closed when not in use. Incompatible chemicals must be segregated and stored in their own designated areas to prevent a volatile reaction. Do not store excessive supplies of chemicals or waste in chemical fume hoods. All chemicals should be transported within secondary containers capable of holding all materials in the event of a spill. Acceptable secondary containers include plastic bottle carriers with closed tops and handles or non-metal liquid tight carts with lips on all four sides. Wear appropriate lab attire such as long pants and closed toed shoes. Bring personal protective equipment like safety glasses, lab coats, appropriate gloves in case of a spill and don't forget a spill kit. Do not transport hazardous materials on the malls during class change times or other crowded pedestrian areas. Use freight elevators for moving chemicals between floors. If freight elevators are not available, use unoccupied passenger elevators. Stairs should be used only if elevators are not available. Never transport cryogenic containers in the passenger elevator without a process to ensure that no one enters the elevator during transport. No employee may ship or offer to ship a hazardous material unless that person has received specialized training. Please contact EHNS to assist you with preparing the shipment if the need arises.